There you go. Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today again on this live expo. And today joining me, Shal, is Monica. So everybody, I want to introduce you to Monica. She is the newest addition to our sales team. So Monica, a very warm welcome to you. I hope you are really going to enjoy your time with us. And you are going to take over the selling of the home tank range and the express tank range. Is that correct? That's correct, Charles. I'm going to take over the home tank range and the express tank range. And I'm standing in for Cindy at the moment. Thank you so much for welcoming me to the team. And I'm looking forward so much to join you guys and just have fun and sell tanks. The fun it will be. So that you don't have to worry about. So. But let's talk about our talk today. So today, we're going to talk about something that is very, um, can I say, it's, it's on everybody's mind. Everybody wants to go on holiday. We are nearing December. Everybody is thinking about the December shutdown period, rest and recuperation, oh. uh, whichever version you want to think of that. And um, people are really thinking about going away. But what is the implication? If, everybody jump in their car and they go to a resort or a holiday place or a camping site. Is there implication in terms of water? Let's find out. I think that's a good reason to think about water. When you go somewhere to rest, I think it's very important. Let's go. Okay, well with that, let's have a look. There we go, Aquadam Steel Tanks. So we are busy with our range of applications and today we're talking about holiday, holiday resort and potable water tanks. So what are holiday resort and potable water tanks? I mean, what would it be? So quick answer is it's potable water tanks, which means it is for drinking water. Water that human beings, people can consume. So that would be for drinking, it would be for cooking, for oh. cleaning, it would be for ablutions. Swimming in. Correct. Everything that people do with water, uh, where they need clean water, that is potable water. So unlike um, non-potable water purposes, but which you can use for irrigation and so on, this water needs to be clean, it needs to be drinkable. So. Potable water would also be utilized around water treatment works and why does that come up? Because most of these uh, big resorts have some form of water treatment where they reuse the water and that water that is either being cleaned or waiting to be cleaned is also stored in huge holding tanks. What is very important is that due to the holiday season your demand on water in any resort is always cyclical. So what is the implication of that? It means that you have very high periods of demand where there's a lot of people and everybody is drinking water, yes. everybody is cooking, everybody is utilizing the water that's available. So that is important because you need to be able to cope with that, um, that, with that demand. So you as a resort owner, as a resort manager must make sure that there is enough for everybody to go around. You also have to think about the maintenance that's going to happen during the off-peak period. So now you want to go and clean all your pools out. What do you do with all the water? You don't want to just let it go to waste, do you? Because there is thousands of liters of water you're going to let out of the swimming pool. And I mean, if you're not going to use it for the plants, you have to store it somewhere. Exactly. But water is becoming more and more expensive these days because water is a scarce commodity. So if you have the water, especially in a big recreational park, you certainly don't want to waste the water you want to utilize again. After you've cleaned the water as well, you want to utilize it again. And that's where you need the big storage facility for off-peak uh, water. Now, during your high period, your, your high usage period, high demand period, there's going to be a lot of people swimming. So what comes with swimming? There's a lot of splashing, splashing diving, diving, everything. You've got these nice fountain spraying and yes. so on. And wherever you have a lot of splashing and spraying and kids getting in and out of the swimming pool, you actually lose a lot of water due to evaporation. 
That's true. So what do you have to do? You have to go and replace the water that you lost due to evaporation. So therefore, you need your usable water store to able to go and fill up what you've just lost during the day. There's places where I went to that I went early in the mornings and before they actually opened the gates they had to refill all the swimming pools and during the day while the people are visiting because of all the water spillage and splashing and going on. So yes, we do need... I don't think we realise how much of water actually do go up in the air, so to speak, at a resort like that because of Definitely. all the spraying and the... Uh, yeah just playing with the water. So, when do you think one would actually need water for a resort or a portable water tank? When would you need that? I will say right in the beginning, um, if you've got a development going on, you need water already to put up certain things. That's right. So you, as a designer of a resort, need to plan for the water from scratch. So at the design stage that needs to be front of, you know, it must be on top of your mind. Where do I get my water from? Because that will be critical for the success of your resort. Then also, not only during the design phase, when you start building and developing your resort, you are going to need water because you need water to do the concrete, to, to build, to do the landscaping. You will definitely need water. So already by that time, you have to have some water storage facilities in place, which of course then needs to be broadened and, and made bigger uh, when for the period that you start having the people. And then as we said before, when you get to peak season, you better be able to handle the demand for water during the peak season. And not only for peak seasons, I mean, through the whole year, it's actually peak se season in a certain areas of the world so where people go traveling from overseas to here or people traveling from here to overseas depending on the season also so you actually need water quite a lot of times during the year so it's not just peak seasons it's also seasons that we think it's not peak seasons but can be peak seasons for other countries. That's very true because, I mean, our, our downtime in terms of uh, demand side, I mean, it's the European winter when it's summer, yeah. So you might have overseas visitors. So what has happened now during this year, that uh, was a, quite a bit lower, mm. but definitely you need to be able to cater for it when it does open up again. One of the biggest concerns that we might have these days especially is interruptions of water. So, I don't know if you've heard the term, but there's a new term being coined as well, which is uh, water shedding. Yes. So, we have the load shedding with electricity, but now we are going into water shedding. So, what is that? That means you don't have a full-time supply of water anymore coming from your municipality, because the demand of the municipality could just be too big. Mostly, it is infrastructure that has just gone so... Well, it's gotten so old and hasn't been replaced and updated yes. that unfortunately there's so many breakages in the system that it just can't cope with the demand. So the moment you have an influx of people into a small town like Margate, for instance, where there's old infrastructure, you could expect to have issues with the municipal yes. uh, infrastructure and the municipal supply. So what do you do? Why is it important then to have a potable water tank? I think the answer actually goes without saying. It's uh, in Afrikaans, it's voorhand liggend. Because imagine that municipal uh, interruption you just had. So suddenly, no water. What does it do to your resort? I've been in a situation where we didn't have water and we had to live out of a swimming pool uh, for a few months because there was no electricity and we couldn't pump the water from the borehole. So I know exactly how it feels not to have water for a certain amount of months. That's a crisis. It's a big crisis. And the problem is if you are reliant on your water park, your, your resort with your water facilities, if you're reliant on that facility to bring in your revenue, then what happens? Your revenue dries up along with the water yes. that dries up. 
So, your guests will start to depart. They won't be happy. So therefore, they're going to leave terrible reviews. That place is not good. There's no water. They didn't make a plan. They didn't plan ahead. If your guests leave, you're going to just lose money. So and not just your money, your business, your... You can have the most beautiful place, but if there's no water, I don't think that anybody will go to your place. That's true. The thing is, what people don't realize is not only the money of the people that's just left that you lose. You, they want the money back. Even if they stay there for a couple of days, they're going to want the money back. So you might lose more money than yes. what they paid for in the, in the first place. Then you have reputational damage. So those people will go around bad mouthing your place and that will lead to future uh, reservations being cancelled by other people. So you have future damage in terms of your income. That is really a bad knock-on effect because to, to get back from such a situation is not an easy task. So you certainly do need some form of backup water. I think it is your responsibility as a responsible owner, as a responsible manager, to have a backup plan for water. And one of the best ways to have backup is to actually do rainwater harvesting. Now that is your speciality because you know all about the yes. rainwater harvesting tanks. That's where our tanks come in, our home tanks, express tanks, we you don't have to worry about water. If it rains, these tanks catch all the water up for you. Well, not all the water, but some of the water up for you. Well, all the water that falls on your roof. And it's all true. the water that falls on your roof will then be taken to the gutters and will go into this tank. So, so for every one millimeter of uh, rain over one meter, uh, one square meter, you will wow. have one liter of water that you save. That's amazing. Isn't it? And so if you have a quite a nice big roof and you have five moles of, of rain, for every square meter of roof you have five liters. So that can add up quite, uh, quite quickly. Quite quickly. And that might just be the buffer that you need to kill you over in times of municipal interruptions. Right now, let's think about where would you need a tank like this? Um, resort tank, potable water tank, where? Let's think. Any, any place where there's people uh, going during the day, like golf courses, um, resorts. Um, Literally swimming. any place any where place. you have a resort. Yes. You are going to need that. If you don't have it, I think you are in for a spot of bother. So wherever there's a resort, you need it. So whether the resort is inland or coastal, you're going to need it because at the coastal areas, guess what? The water that's around you in the sea is not yes. potable water. It's not drinking water. Definitely not. So you still need a potable water tank for your resort, even though you are surrounded by We only water. take the sea water for certain uses. There you go. <laughs> so all the campsites that you can think of, they need tanks. Caravan parks, they need tanks. Water parks, well, that goes without saying. They need a lot of water. They need to store the water. Basically, everywhere where you will have people drinking water is where you will need to store the store water in water, a potable yes. drinking tank. Even like shopping malls where people go and do shopping, I mean, there's a certain time that the pipe can just burst or anything can happen and then the people in the shopping centers are without water so yeah, you're, you're touching on an interesting uh, topic there because malls in, in South Africa and around the world need to have fire water tanks now that is just to feed the sprinkler systems and the hose reel systems yes. but it might become pertinent to actually have a backup water tank to feed your taps and your ablution facilities because if your mall have run out of water, that is a very sorry sight. And a smelly sight also. Have you been exposed to such a situation? Yes, I have. That's I went to a certain game park where there was no water available. And um, 
Yes, I think I did in bar for three days oh. because of the smell. So okay, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I won't <laughs> talk about it more. Yeah, I see. So it can really become a a dire situation, and, and where you are in a game park, game reserve like that, you, I mean, you have a choice. You can now vote with your with your feet and go, or you can try and wait it out and see if they can make a plan. If they don't make a plan, guess what? It would have had a very bad knock-on effect in terms of your reviews. So at the moment, you might still go back because they made a plan. Yes, definitely, they did make a plan. Well, that's wonderful to know. Then let's think who would be the people that actually need this. And I'm not talking about the guests. Who would need to have a resort tank or a uh, potable water tank? Any developer, any person that's thinking of even at home, when you stay at home for holiday, I mean, you as a person staying in your house also sometimes run out of water. That's true, and I mean, people might as well think of the houses as the resorts these days because everybody is staying at home for the It's true. Holiday. <laughs> but in fact, every responsible owner or a responsible manager of a resort really need to have a look at storing water. So whether it's a timeshare resort, a holiday flat, whether it's camping site, doesn't matter, you better look at that. So starting at the planners, golf courses. Now a golf course it's nice and green, but for a reason. Yes, it it's, is. It's being watered all the time. So it's being watered at night time when the people don't play. But it takes a lot of water to keep it nice and lush and green like that. So you do need to store water. And not just golf courses. I've been to a stadium where they actually built a dam underneath the grass oh, wow. where they stored the water for capturing so the water will drain through the grass and it will go underneath and they will spray it over and over again because the grass they had to pay quite a lot of money to put the grass on the field and that grass needs special water where they treat a bit treatment in the water and so forth. That's very true because that grass is, is not your normal garden variety type of grass so it's a very specialized kind of grass that yes. they use on those sport fields and yes very true they put where else would they put the tank because uh, space is at a premium they utilize every piece of available space yes. either for parking or for shopping there's just no space to put a big tank so the best place is to put it right under the pitch under the sport field there yes so that's that's brilliant and they do that but people don't realize it because they don't see it they don't they don't yeah. even realize what's going on underneath them while they're crossing the field or running down. There's so many sports people that don't even know about that water tank. Yeah, very interesting point. So, of course, amusement parks, as we said before, camping sites for the ablutions, all of those people, uh, managers, owners of those places, they would be the people that need a potable water tank. So, let's think about Aquadam and how we can assist. Um, we have a few products. We do. And there's a few products that can specifically assist with potable water and it's, it's, they come in various guises. So the first tank that we can assist with is a zinc -alum tank which we call the Smart Tank Extreme and it is called that name for a very specific reason because it really is a smart tank. A tank. It's, it's a beautiful tank to look at. They come in sizes from 13,000 to 13.2 wow. uh, million 3 liters. 3.2 million, it's amazing. A lot of water can be stored in that. So that is, is and it's potable water, so you put a potable water liner in there and you have the water at your disposal. The second type of tank that we can utilize is a fire okay. tank. And it's also called a fire tank for a specific reason that it is mostly used for fire applications. Is it only used for fire or can it used for potable water also? No, it can actually be used for potable water as well. Because the difference between the fire tank and the smart tank is the steel that it is made from. So the steel is, is a POSMAC steel sheet, but 
The main difference, the bigger difference than that, is that there's no liner inside. So it has got a concrete floor, there's no liner, but the water inside is clean. So you oh, don't need a liner. Amazing. You can actually drink the water. So in this instance, fire water is normally stored, but in areas where you have very, very limited space. What they have done before, um, they've taken they've taken the, uh, the the fire tank and they actually split it up. And I'm going to use a glass as an example. So what they've done is they've taken the glass and they said, okay, two thirds of the glass, that there must be, let's say up to where my hand is, that there must be reserved just for fire water because you always have to have that critical amount of water and then that little portion at the top they can actually use that for drinking water because oh, wow. it's nice and clean potable water so how would you go about doing that well it's actually easy you put an outlet right there so yes. and that outlet is only for the drinking water so all the water if, if all the water gets taken out of the tank up until that point the bottom portion still have all the water you need to service your fire system that's amazing so it is actually a tank that can be used for a dual purpose and that really is something that that one can look at but that is mostly only used where there's really limited space so Coming back to the fire tank, yes, you can also use it for potable water only. Okay. So, uh, especially if you have an application where you want to um, have, let's say, chilled water, we are actually working on an application where we are insulating a tank like that. But uh, th that's a very interesting thing that I would like to talk about in the future. Uh, e uh, expo. Now, you're getting me excited for nothing. Well, it's because it's. <laughs> Always, it's very exciting to talk about all these tanks. I must say, there, there is. is so many tanks. Yeah, and of course the tank that is right up your alley. Home there you go, tank. the home tank. And there's two versions of it. The one is the upright round tank. The other one's the slim line tank. So those tanks are also potable water tanks. They don't have a liner inside. They are. Um, they come in all kinds of different colors that you can actually choose from and you can store a lot of water in those. So, what's the sizes that they come in? Comes from 1,500. Yes. Up to 345,000 liters. Sure. Okay. So, that's actually quite a lot. So, because we, we have a, a round tank, Let, let's start with the round tank range. So, we have a round tank range that go to, from the one and a half up to 10,000 and yes. that can be assembled and uh, yeah at the factory and taken just like that. If it is bigger than 10,000 it will have to get assembled on site because on site. the diameter of the tank gets too large. That's correct. But then on the slim line, what is the sizes that you have specifically on the slim line? 2,000, okay. 3,000, 4,000, up to 7,000. That's it, up to 7,000 litres and 7,000 litres of water is a lot of water. For a, for a household that's more than enough, it will last you quite a long time. Right. So with that, I hope that gave you the idea that when it comes to potable water, whether it is for residential use or actually in this case that we focused on, on holiday resorts, we have quite a number of solutions that we can offer you. So. We would really like to talk to you, listen to your project, um, the challenges that you might have, and we will guide our clients in the right direction. So whether it's a smart tank, whether it's a fire tank, or it's a, a home tank solution, any one of those, we would certainly be able to assist our clients with those. So our contact details, if you want to contact us, 086 100 10 10, that's where you can phone us. Or if you want to email us, it's sales at aquadam.co.za. Yes, and then we have a website, www.aquadam.co.za. And you can find us on Facebook and on YouTube and on LinkedIn. So all the major social media channels you can find us on. So there you go. 
a Kodan streaming expo every week at 3 o'clock. We have one. Before we leave, what are we talking about next week, though? Well, we are talking about a totally different um, topic, but it does actually link up, in a sense, because we're talking about septic tanks and also township development tanks. So that would be next week on Thursday. So next week, Thursday at 3 o'clock, we'll be talking about that. You are also welcome to follow us on Facebook and YouTube and LinkedIn, where you will find the information, where you can look at it. But if there's any questions from anybody, you are most welcome to ask us the questions, uh, whether you're part of the meeting on Zoom or if you want to pop a question on, on Facebook, pop the question, we'll get back to you and answer your questions. And we just want to say hello to Rudy. Thank you for coming back and be part of the team again. We are looking forward to see you soon. Yes, Rudy was a bit ill-disposed, so, but he's up and uh, so he, he would be joining us back up again on the, uh, well, on our expos quite soon, I believe. But uh, with that, I would like to say thank you as well to Vili. Vili was our co-host today and he was behind the scenes looking after everything, making sure everything runs smoothly. But with that, let us depart. Depart. Are we there yet? We're going to depart <laughs> and we're going to find you at the next resort. And the date for the next resort would be next week, Thursday at 3 o'clock. So thank you everybody. Thank you for tuning in. We will certainly see you next week at the same place, same time.